You guys ask and I respond. We did a video a while back about 10 things that I bought from the thrift store. And a lot of you requested more of that type of video and more importantly, how I use lots of those things in the garden. So I've got 10 more for you today. We're gonna walk about the garden and I'm gonna show you how I put some of those really treasured finds to use. So number one are my britches. So, Stuart laughed and said I looked like the Terminator girl or Commando or whatever it was. Uh, what was it called, Stuart? The Tomb Raider? Anyhow, I was looking for some really utilitarian kinds of pants that I could wear out in the garden. I looked at Duluth Trading. I looked at some more high-end kind of places. And then I thought, well, before I invest, I'm just going to go to Goodwill and look. And lo and behold, I found some of these pants at Goodwill. They have all sorts of little slots and pockets where I can put garden tools. I love them. They're great. They're tough and they work just brilliantly for me in the garden. Another thing that I look for, if that is number one, then this is number two, and that is always look for <laughs> something that you don't have to buy new, but that you might need. So this is just a beaten up old plastic stepping stool. Now, whenever possible, I try to avoid buying new plastic things, unless it's something that's uh, really unique. So something like this that is functional that I need to buy, I can get for mere pennies at the thrift store or at the junk store, and it serves the same purpose as if it were brand new. Plus, this one's really dirty, so I can keep it back here in the flower bed, and that kind of hides it. Well, number three, you guys know I am constantly waging war against those pesky squirrels. They get in, they mess up the potted bulbs that I have. If I've just planted a broadcast some lettuce seeds and they've germinated, they'll go in there and dig them all up. And it is just, it causes me no end of frustration. So here are a couple of solutions. Now, this one is a chicken wire cloche. I got this off of Gardener Supply and I can put it over this pot of bulbs that I've got here. So keeping that in mind, when I went to the thrift store, I found this just kind of metal basket. I have no idea what its original purpose was, but I have used it for so many different things. Number one, I can turn it on its side in the potager, I guess upside down rather, in the potager, and that protects the soil and keeps it uh, basically just unpenetratable 
so that the squirrels can't get through that grid and rough up the soil. So that's one purpose for it. I can also use it, I have been known to set it on two tree stumps like this and use that as a small table. I can keep topiaries in it. I can carry things from one place to another. I found, find it really invaluable and I love the fact that it's got this kind of rusty vibe. So that would be my number three thrift store find and how I use it in the garden. Well, you guys know I'm topiary obsessed, so it's pretty obvious that whenever I go to the thrift store, I'm looking for anything topiary related or that I can create a topiary out of. So for instant topiary, there is no better find than something like this. This was just an old wreath form. Whatever was growing on it obviously died. The person took that dead foliage off and then recycled this at the thrift store. And then what I did was I just took some old um, vines and things that were growing in the garden. Actually, they weren't old when I clipped them, but they were still malleable. I wrapped them around the form to give it kind of a rustic vibe, and then all I have to do is just plant something and I have an instant topiary. So look for topiary forms when you're at the thrift store. Well, nasturtiums, anyone? Anytime I go to the thrift store, this would be my, is this number six, Stuart? I think it's number six. I'm always looking for things that I can put tiny pots in because I love the look of these tiny little terracotta pots. So when I saw this wrought iron, I guess it's a muffin pan or maybe a pan that you make madeleines out of, uh, whatever it is, it's a piece of cookware and it perfectly perfectly holds these tiny little terracotta pots. So I thought it would be really fun to use it as kind of a tray. Well, it's cold outside, but that's because it's winter. And it's also a great time in the winter garden to kind of assess your landscape and ground covers and how they're used in your landscape in particular. And that's what I'm doing today. I thought I would share with you five of my favorite ground covers, which ones I really like, um, which ones I have kind of cast aside because they didn't work so well for me, and maybe some ground cover alternatives. So let's get started with number one, a plant in my garden that you guys frequently ask about, and this is mondo grass. In contrast to monkey grass that's liriope, mondo grass is a cushiony ground cover. It grows very short. It really likes good drainage. It's hardy down to about minus 10 degrees, and if you don't have a hard winter, then it will stay pretty much evergreen through the season, and it looks really beautiful right now, I think. Now, one of the downsides to Mondo grass, as attractive as it is as a ground cover, is that it can be kind of expensive. So if you're able to share some of that uh, or get someone to share it from their landscape with you, that is great. I also have found that a way to kind of mitigate that expense a little bit is to tuck it around flagstones. That serves kind of a dual purpose. You don't have to have as large a quantity of it, and you're also not stepping on it. So these pavers that go into my potage make wonderful little stepping stones and I also love the way this cushiony mondo grass kind of frames each stepping stone. Now it comes in, um, this variety is dwarf mondo grass. There's a variety that's a little bit taller. It also comes in black. There's a black mondo grass that's beautiful by the way in container arrangements and I've even seen seen mondo grass used as a house plant because it really is pretty easy. It doesn't require a ton of light and it's, uh, I, I think it's just maybe something that you might want to try as an option. I myself am go going to try it. I'm sorry, it's cold out and I'm having trouble getting my mouth to work. Um, I'm going to try it as a, as a house plant myself. Now, one other thing about Mondo grass is that it will tell you, if you look at different kinds of literature or websites, it will tell you that it can handle full sun to part shade. But I have found definitely in the south where it's a popular ground cover that it really wants afternoon shade. Otherwise, in the dead of summer in July and August, 
harvest, this will turn kind of brown. Um, it almost, it's like it goes dormant or something. The areas that are in part shade where I've got it planted, they can really handle the heat and the strong sun a lot better. But does it always bounce back? Absolutely, it's really tough and it would be number one on my list of ground covers. Now let's move on to another area of my garden. Now on to number two, which is a juga. But before I talk about bugleweed or a juga, I want to talk a little bit about my garden bench that was damaged in the ice storm. I told you that this armrest on the right hand side had pretty much been demolished. I did, however, save the bits and pieces of it. And a number of you said, well, I could do a template and I could then have it repaired. And yes, because I don't like to throw things away that still have value, definitely, I will have it repaired, but I also know that sometimes things get pushed down on my list of priorities and I may not make it around to this for a while. So it will easily be obscured by this hydrangea if I'm not as uh, uh, quick on the mark as I should be about getting it repaired before spring. So thank you for all of you guys that reminded me that I could get it repaired by a woodworker and a template. Okay, so back to ground cover. I love a juga. It turns this gorgeous, gorgeous purple in the winter time. Now it can come in different colors. This is just the classic form of bugleweed that will put out a dainty, lovely little spire of a blue flower in spring. It looks especially beautiful at that time, I think, with golden fever few or anything else that's golden and low growing. But I like it because it will grow in areas where grass doesn't want to grow. So if the, you have spaces where lawn just doesn't want to get established then you might consider growing a juga. Now a juga can be a little bit finicky I found. Well this is a heads up to any of you who are first time gardeners or any of you who garden in clay like I do and across the south a lot of us do garden in clay. This is my number one bullet proof perennial. These perennials can really take almost anything that weather or um, really bad uh, growing situations can throw at them. These are hail resistant, they are heat resistant, they're cold resistant, um, they're wind resistant. And part of that is probably because they originated on the prairie, they're native prairie plants. And even though a number of them I'm gonna show you have been hybridized, nevertheless, they have that really good DNA in their, um, in their veins. So the number one is Echinacea purpurea, if that name is familiar to you as a cold remedy, then that would be this same plant. Again, there are lots of new varieties of this that are in different hues. Some of them are in, in kind of a, oh, there are some in white, there are some in kind of a gold orange color, but I have found that just the regular old Echinacea purpurea or purple coneflower is the one that performs the best. It's a pollinator magnet. It has wonderful uh, cone head seed pods once it finishes blooming. I love the fact that the seed can be harvested and gifted to others. You can scatter it around in different places in your garden. It makes a wonderful cut flower with or without petals. And there are some varieties that where the petals kind of radiate out and some that where they kind of, um, oh, they kind of grow down towards the ground. Look for a form that is pleasing to you. Now, I don't have these in bloom right now to show you and that's intentional because you can probably find these in your nursery and garden centers right now. You can get them in the ground and they'll be blooming in your own garden. Like I say, these are tough as nails. They're drought tolerant and once you get them established, they really are pretty carefree. So now let's move on to the now number two on my list may be the easiest to grow plant ever, and that's Rudbeckia. It is, um, oh, you probably know it as a black-eyed Susan. Some people call it a brown-eyed Susan. The variety that you see fairly commonly that is probably the most vigorous variety out there is Rudbeckia goldsturm. I'll put some pictures of it in bloom where it was very rambunctious in my garden. Southern Living came out once to do 
nothing but just film the Rudbeckia, and it's absolutely beautiful. Again, it can handle any kind of weather condition, poor soil, it's drought tolerant. I also like it because it can handle part shade. Now that said, this can sometimes I have found be a little bit invasive. So when it goes to seed and um, after the flowers are finished, if you don't want it to really propagate itself and proliferate around the garden, then you might want to deadhead it. It's really beautiful. It's a very perky flower. It has that quintessential color that we associate with mid to late summer kind of gold. Now, another variety that I really like of Rudbeckia is called Rudbeckia maxima. And I love it because it has these wonderful, large blue-green leaves. I got this at Bustani Farm in, um, in Stillwater, Oklahoma. This is also extremely tough. You can see here it's getting ready to put on a flower. This is a softer yellow. What I think of more is maybe a springy yellow. It's not got, it doesn't have quite so much gold in it. I've got it growing here in tandem with some lilies and these beautiful allium. I love it in any kind of gray montage where I'm growing other gray plants along with it. And one of those other gray plants is the next plant my next tough as nails bulletproof plant, and that would be Sedum Autumn Joy. I love it this time of year, and when it first comes out in the spring, it's got these wonderful blue-green tufts. You can literally...